How does the wavelength of a tsunami compare with the wavelength of regular ocean waves? For three months, these submariners will not see daylight. They'll patrol the seas in a vessel with no windows, at a depth where light barely penetrates. They seem to be traveling blind, yet their lives depend on safe passage through the ocean depths. How do they navigate without sight? They use their ears. Submarine crews rely on sonar, the use of reflected sound to detect objects in water or air. A sonar device aboard the sub sends out a burst of sound waves. When the waves hit an object or the ocean floor, they bounce back or reflect. The reflected sound waves are called echoes. Another part of the sonar device receives the echoes, interprets them, and calculates how far away the object is. Just keep an eye on those biologics there on the left. This type of sonar is good at detecting large objects like other ships. It's not as good with small or distant objects. To improve sonar technology, scientists are studying two animals with highly advanced natural sonar systems. Dolphins. And bats. Why do submarine crews use sonar? As you watch the following segment, Think about how dolphins and bats use echolocation to navigate their worlds. Light travels very poorly in water. Its energy decreases rapidly when it is absorbed by water. Sound, on the other hand, travels extremely well in water. Dolphins communicate with one another by transmitting and receiving different sounds. Squeaks, grunts, moans. But one sound in particular, the click, is the sound dolphins make when they are using their sonar. The use of sonar by animals to navigate through their environment, locate food, or avoid obstacles is called echolocation. Their sonar helps dolphins see, but they don't use it all the time. When they're simply swimming in open water, dolphins don't need to echolocate. They listen for sound cues to get their bearings. They hear waves breaking on the seashore. They will hear the noise of shipping in a harbor. They'll hear the clinking chains of a mooring, for example. So they will travel quite happily in total darkness and swim quite fast without echolocating to avoid bumping into things. Dave Goodson is a sonar engineer who studies dolphins. He says the sonar signal takes a lot of muscular energy to produce. Dolphins use it to navigate difficult spaces, and primarily, to find food. When they use the active sonar, it's because they need to. They have to identify a swimming prey, lock onto it, guide their mouth to the actual fish. It's equivalent to us reaching out across the dinner table to pick up a piece of food, but it takes quite a lot of energy. Here's how dolphin sonar works. A dolphin makes a series of clicks by moving air through the nasal sacs located near its blowhole, a nostril on top of its head. The vibrations from the clicks travel to an area in the dolphin's forehead called the melon, which is filled with fat. The melon acts as a kind of acoustical lens to focus the sound waves into a narrow beam. The dolphin sends out the sound waves in short pulses. Just as in sonar that submarines use, the sound waves bounce off objects. The dolphin receives the echoes in its lower jaw, which is connected by nerves to its brain. The dolphin's brain receives the nerve impulses from the jaw and interprets the echoes, 
just as our brains interpret light received through our eyes. The time it takes for an echo to leave the dolphin and bounce back tells the dolphin how far away the target is. Other qualities of the reflected sound, such as amplitude and frequency, let the dolphin know the object's size, shape, surface texture, and the speed at which it's moving. All of this happens in a fraction of a second. Just to put it into perspective, a bottlenose dolphin can see something the size of an orange about 80 meters ahead of him. And that is approximately equivalent to the echo it would get from quite a large fish, but one that it could still swallow whole. Dave Goodson continues to study dolphins in the hope that he can better understand how dolphins manage such precision in their use of echolocation. Other scientists interested in sonar are drawn to a much misunderstood creature of the night, the bat. There's a saying, blind as a bat. That's not exactly true. Most bats can see, though their eyesight is poor. Like dolphins, though, bats have a keen sense of hearing. They, too, use their ears to see. Bats are nocturnal creatures, active only at night. When they swarm out of their caves to hunt for insects in the dark, they rely on echolocation. Each night, a bat will eat hundreds of insects, up to half its own body weight. Its sonar is so sensitive that a bat can detect an insect the size of a gnat. It can distinguish the insect from all the objects around it. This video shows a bat intercepting a mealworm dangling on a thread. And what's really interesting in these maneuvers is that the bat can catch the mealworm even if there are other objects near it. Somehow the bat has the ability to segregate echoes from the mealworm from echoes from other objects, even if they're fairly close together. The bat can say, that's a mealworm and something else, and that's a mealworm. James Simmons, a neuroscientist from Brown University, has videotaped hundreds of bat flights to analyze their use of echolocation. He is setting up a bat obstacle course of closely spaced wires. In his lab, Simmons mimics the darkness in which bats fly. He also uses a device called a bat detector. Normally, bat sounds are ultrasonic. That is, they're beyond the range of human hearing. The bat detector lowers the frequency of the bat sounds, making them audible to human ears. Simmons and his team monitored brain activity while the bats flew the obstacle course. As the bats started flying, it would send out a sound. A fraction of a second later, the first wire produced an echo. Then the second wire did, and the third, and so on. And the sounds are very long as they travel in space. The sounds are so long that the echoes overlap the ears of the bat. How does the bat segregate these echoes to tell that there are different objects in different places? Not only that, but the echoes were coming back very, very quickly. It seemed to Simmons they were coming faster than the bat's brain could process them. Yet the bat wasn't confused. It navigated the course perfectly. Our experience tells us what the bat does is impossible. And yet the bats fly around and do this all the time. Simmons is designing new experiments that he hopes will unlock the mystery of how bats do the seemingly impossible. If he or other scientists discover exactly how animal echolocation works, humans could benefit. Better sonar systems could be developed for use at sea. Sonar devices that help the blind navigate around objects could become commonplace and medical technology, such as ultrasound machines, could be made even more useful. A wide variety of human inventions could be improved, thanks in part to the dolphin and the bat.